Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, everyone. We're back. We're live on this beautiful Tuesday morning, and we are excited to be young talents making way here on FinTech. We talk about things that matter to Hawaii, to our community, with the students, with the brilliant school students of the schools and their science projects as well. Now, the other day I was watching a truly heartbreaking scene, a video of a green sea turtle that was struggling to nest on a plastic debris filled beach on Christmas Island in the Indian Ocean. And that scene really uh, touched me because, it, you know, it was so powerful image that the plastic we use in our daily life can really be lethal to marine life and the creatures that live in, in, in the environment as well. And so today we're talking about plastics here in Hawaii and the conditions of our beaches. And we have a student from Mililani High School joining us, J uh, Jasmine Chase. Welcome to the show, Jasmine. Nice to have you here today. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> um, and so, um, you know, this pl um, Jasmine is a, is, a, is, a, is a VIP, you know, because uh, she's the winner of the Central Oahu Science District Fair. She's a finalist at the State of Hawaii Science and Engineering Fair, which is on Thursday, so better be ready for that. And, and I believe on Thursday, uh, and I believe you're also going to the International Science Fair, yeah? So we, yes. we, uh -huh. so we are excited to, to, to learn more about the conditions of plastics here in Hawaii. So why is plastics a problem? So I think that plastics, even though, you know, we use them in our daily lives, they're used for packaging, and they're also in our consumer products, such as even toothpaste. Um, but they're a problem because when you wash plastics down the drain, or even when you throw them away in the, in the ocean, um, what happens, especially with microplastics, which are plastics that are less than five millimeters in the size. tiny, tiny bits. Tiny plastics, is that they can be eaten by animals, even as small as plankton. Plankton can eat these microplastics. And what happens is because um, plastics are hydrophobic, they can soar pollutants to them. And these pollutants are also passing along with the plastics throughout the food chain. And when more animals eat the animals that have already consumed plastics, um, it just keeps building up. And eventually humans can even be hurt by this problem. So it's a, it's a huge global issue that really needs to be looked into. The plastic doesn't biodegradate easily because mm -hmm. yeah, it, it passes on to different animals, larger size. Um, how long? Uh, so these plastics can basically be uh, kind of eternal, yeah, if it's sent into the environment? Mm -hmm. oh. So um, I was actually looking at a study just a few days ago, and I was saying that styrofoam degrades about 50 years, but plastic water bottles can stay around um, for longer than 100 years. So I think it said 600 years. Um, wow. But it's a long time to be in our oceans, and plastics became really popular in the 1970s. So you can imagine they've been in the, lo the oceans a long time, and they're going to stay there for a long time. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so it's a very serious problem that mm -hmm. we need to think about and address. So what did you do as part of this uh, award-winning science project? <laughs> so what I basically did was I um, studied plastics and sediments. So I tested um, different beaches around Oahu to see the prevalence of this problem. Um, on islands. Um, there have only been a few previous studies done on this, so it's a real gap that we need to fill in um, determining how big this problem is, is on Oahu. Maybe, um, I, be I believe we have some slides. L yes. let let's have our first slide up so we can see. Oh, okay, well, so wh what is this? All right, so this is a slide that shows um, the different locations that previous microplastic sediment studies have been done in, and as you can see, there's only four real locations that I could find at least that studies have been conducted at, and the problem is we can't really see where plastics are most prevalent in, which means that we don't know enough about the issue, and especially because all of these different studies, and this is actually only three different studies, they use different methodologies, and one was even conducted in 2004 and the other two in 2016, which means that there's a large time gap and difference it, in methodologies. They're old, yeah. Yeah, so they can't right. easily be compared is the problem. Right, okay. So um, you... Um, followed this uh, previous research mm -hmm. that has been carried out, and then uh, you 
kept going. Is that right? Yeah, so yeah, okay. I'm actually in um, this class called AP Research. It's a new class this year. It's part of a larger program called AP Capstone. And what our teachers encourage us to do and what the college board in, um, encourages us to do is find a gap in research. So you can pick any topic, whether it be in science or in social studies or anything, and you fill the gap with your own research. So this is at Mililani High School. At Mililani High School. We say hello to all the teachers at Mililani <laughs> High School, and particularly Tyson Kikugawa, who is here in our studio today. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe let's have a look at your second slide so we can really see your um, methodology, if you want. So th this is uh, your work, yeah? Well, I was helped by many people throughout the way. So I was helped by Dr. Um, Royer at the UH um, Manoa University. And she taught me oh, okay. a bit about her methodology. And her methodology is what I adapted to use in my project. Um, so I ended up testing four beaches um, across oh, the island. looking at them here, yeah. In December. Yeah. So um, these are just kind of, it's kind of a small sample. It's only four different beaches, so one from each side to see the prevalence. And this was kind of like a baseline data so that I could test um, further as soon as I made sure I knew the methodology and I knew how to execute it. Okay, so this was basically to test it. Okay, mm -hmm. let's see. Um, we have uh, um, another slide where we can basically see uh, the, uh, the whole island and all of the locations that you sampled as part of the study. Yeah, so in my January sampling, I sampled eight different beaches, so eight. two okay, from so. each side. And it was all in a span of three days to try to eliminate time as an issue, so it was a lot of driving. Oh, <laughs> driving all over, okay. Yeah, I'm really thankful that my parents um, allowed me to do this project and they were willing to drive me everywhere. It was a lot of strain on them. But I tested two beaches from each of the island to kind of see where plastic was the most prevalent. And then from there, I looked at the prevalence of different colors of plastics to see the... Um, effects of photodegradation, which is the effect of UV rays over time, and the different sizes to see if microplastics, which are less than 5 millimeters, or macroplastics, which I defined as greater than 5 millimeters, are most prevalent. And I also looked at the different shapes and sizes of them, too. Now, you're talking about um, um, pieces which are very small, mm -hmm. 5 millimeters or smaller. Um, I mean, I'm thinking, uh, uh, you know, even the audience must be thinking, oh, you know, how do you actually find these tiny pieces of plastics on a beach, you know, where we have sand grains, we have coral uh, particles and tiny rocks and everything. How do you actually sample the plastics? Yeah, so I think this is actually on the next slide. So, oh, um, we have one more. Yeah, oh. so this kind of shows how I sample the different beaches. So it was following Dr. Royer's um, procedures for sampling. So what she does in her study um, is she has different quadrats, which are different squares of sampling. So you start out from the low tide line of the beach. We, we, we're looking at the um, at a beach that would be observed from above. Above, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So you go from the low tide line, and then you're working away from the beach as you go. And it's a um, 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter sample, and you go 10 centimeters deep. Um, oh, okay. And then you go at the low tide line, then um, seven meters up from that, you sample your third quadrant, and in between is your second. So you're getting kind of a look at where about the low tide line would be for most beaches, and then the high tide line would be for most beaches, and just about a middle, too. OK, OK. And I think we have some pictures of mm -hmm. you uh, sampling this. Um... Oh, OK. So yeah. where are you here? This. Uh... Um, I think this is actually at Sand Island. Oh, I'm not okay. exactly sure, though. I went to a lot of beaches. Yeah. But um, at each beach, so I would sample from the different squares. So I would scoop up and then put it into the bucket that you see. The on yellow the side one. Of me. And then so from there. So there's a bucket, and yeah, we put the sand in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I would sift through it. So I'd have one of my parents help me um, shake through the plastics. And then from there, I would see. Um, I would get everything larger than about three millimeters. So I was unfortunately not able to sample microplastics less than three millimeters. But I had to distinguish between shell and plastic. And if I wasn't sure, then I put it in my sample anyway, just to double check. Um, and then from there, I collect those in bags, and then I take them to my lab procedure. OK. So you collected all these plastics uh, from all these um, surveys from you know different beaches across, mm -hmm. across the island. Uh, you said it took three days for you to actually, you know, gather all this uh, yeah. data and information. Um, and then um, you went back to the lab, your, your, your lab, I guess it's a, a Mililani High School, yeah? 
Yeah, so... Okay, um, so here, uh, yeah, we're looking at, uh, I guess this is the lab, yeah. Yeah, so my, my chemistry teacher, Mr. Mrs. Sudachita, she was, um, she was gracious enough to let me use her um, classroom to um, sort through all the plastics again because she actually helped me again last year with my previous project. And what I did, if we could pull up the slide again, is um, what I did is I added, um, oh, the, the slide before that, yep. Um, so I added a salt solution in so that all the plastics would float and that all the shell and the sand would sink, and then I dried it out. And from there, that's when I sorted through all the plastics, and I... Oh, that's yeah. how you ultimately uh, do it. Okay, that's how mm -hmm. you differ differentiate the, the, the plastics from the other. Okay, yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah, so I actually followed a so procedure did, yeah, okay. by, um, by NOAA. So I had um, Mr. Mark Manuel, who is the director here in the Pacific region, of um, NOAA's marine debris program. Um, I had him help me through the procedure, so he sent me this um, link to the procedure that NOAA officials follow for um, organizing and sorting the plastic from sand sediments. Wow, yeah. it's wonderful to see that the whole community was in involved. Yeah, Definitely, because, a lot of people yeah. helped me. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, so Jasmine, you carried out this uh, um, project for monitoring plastics on our beaches because, it, as we said, it's important, it's causing problems to our ecosystems as well. What did you find? So I ended up finding that plastics were most prevalent on the east and north sides. So I had uh -huh. a big outlier on the east side, and that was Kalama Beach Park. And I found over 2,000 plastics just in those three squares that I sampled. And that's not that's not a lot of sand. And to this be is, yeah, you said, uh, I mm -hmm. mean, the square 10 centimeters deep. So yeah, we're that's, talking. That's not a lot of space. And especially if you imagine that each plastic that I found that has the potential to go throughout a chain of animals and wow. even end up back to us. And that's transporting different chemicals, as I was saying before. So each plastic really makes a difference. So by picking them up, I think that that was a good part of the project for me, too, is eliminating the threat that they could pose. Right, right. Um, I believe we have a picture where we can see the samples that you mm -hmm. collected. Oh, OK. So w what are we um, looking at here? So here I have the sample from um, Quadrat 3 on Kalama Beach Park. So Quadrat 3 usually has the most amount of plastics that's nearer to the high tide line. Mm. And here we see um, microplastics on the left top hand corner. And there are over um, 600, I think there were, um, of the microplastics here. And those are the ones less than five millimeters again. And then on the right, we see um, many, many macroplastics. So those are plastics that were over or equal to five millimeters in this study. And on the left bottom corner, we see the larger macroplastics that were over 20 millimeters or equal to 20 millimeters in size. And you found uh, all of this just in a tiny quadrant, in a tiny mm -hmm. square or cube, I guess, of the, the of one of our beaches. Yeah, so that was all from just one of those um, 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter by 10 centimeter squares. Um, all of that on just one beach, one square. It's a lot of plastic. It's impressive. It's mm -hmm. impressive. Yeah. Um, so. Um, um, you, you, you found these plastics. Um, what are um, some possible? Why does it? Why is, is this plastic there? Why is it is is, uh, is on the on our beaches, in our sand, in our waters? What what is happening? So plastics are used in a lot of consumer products, um, such as toothpaste, gum, a lot of things we don't think that they're going to be in. So when those washed on the drain, that affects it, and also our clothing. Yeah. So when you wear polyester clothing, every time it goes into the laundry machine, a lot of fibers from the clothing is going oh, down the drain. That. So that's something we don't really think about. And also the um, things like packaging or um, different sorts of natural disasters, like the um, tsunami in Japan that happened a few years back, that unleashes a lot of plastic debris into our oceans. It goes into the ocean, it stays there, basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there are many gyres that um, have plastic in them, oh. just like swirling about. And I think our Pacific one is one of the largest ones. So uh, what is exactly is one of these gyros? It's, it's, a, it's a, the currents gather together? Yeah, so the currents is basically creating this like whirlwind, not whirlwind, but like um, this pool of like plastic just floating around and around. And we're not talking about like small pools either. Um, they're saying that it's three times the size of France, the one in the oh, Pacific. Wow. So it's it's a huge amount of plastic. So it's a massive amount of plastics floating in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
It's like an island of plastic. <laughs> yeah. Here in FinTech Hawaii, we're talking about uh, plastics on our beaches in Hawaii, as well as in the world. We're learning from Jasmine Chase, a student from Mililani High School, and the finalist at the upcoming State of Hawaii Science and Engineering Fair. And it's time for us to take a break now, but we'll be back for more. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Welcome to Sister Power. I'm your host, Sharon Thomas Yarbrough, where we motivate, educate, empower, and inspire all women. We are live here every other Thursday at 4 p.m., and we welcome you to join us here at Sister Power. Aloha and thank you. And we're back. We are here at FinTech Hawaii, talking about plastics with Jasmine Chase from Mililani High School, a finalist at the upcoming at our upcoming State of Hawaii Science and Engineering Fair. We're learning from Jasmine about this. Uh, um, well, it's not only Hawaii; it's a global issues. This plastic that ends up into our oceans uh, and it e eats uh, and it's eaten basically by. Um, animals, the tiny animals, and it can go up to the food chain and to eventually get to us as well. Um, now, uh, Jasmine, you, you, you were talking, um, you mentioned in, in our break uh, something about your hypothesis and the ways um, the distributions of the plastics you found along the, uh, our, our coastlines of the island of Oahu is affected by water currents. Mm -hmm. So uh, I believe we have a slide where we're seeing a map with the, the currents. If you can tell us uh, uh, something about that. Um, Oh, uh, I believe it's the next one, I think. Okay. Um, well. the, one, the one after that, I think. Yeah. Oh, okay. But here okay. we go. Here we go. Yeah. It's all right. Um, so here we see um, different ocean currents um, taken from the day before my January experiment took place. Um, and you can see the lighter blue, and then as you go from dark blue to the lighter colors in red, um, that means that the ocean currents are going faster. So if we look at where the ocean currents are going the fastest, that's on the east side and the north side. So part of the reason that I think that what I found is that the east and the north side had the most amount of plastics is because um, they're being carried by the currents, and the faster these currents are, I think that that, that affects it too, where plastic is going to build up at. And especially if you look at um, Kailua and Kaneohe Bay, yeah. um, it's going right into the bay, and we didn't see any currents coming out of it, at least on the three days that I studied. So I only have this one day here shown, but we didn't see any currents coming out. So that could be, that could have affected um, how the plastics build up. And over time, the currents do change. So that's one reason why my experiment is. Um, Slightly, it's it's only going to really apply to um, the winter months because the currents kind of totally change in the summer. So if I could, I would I would do more research in different seasons. I guess it's also important to monitor, as you said, this uh, uh, over time mm -hmm. because you you did this in the winter, but as well other seasons. Uh, are you planning uh, uh, on carrying out more uh, research, more surveys about the, the distributions of plastics in the upcoming month? Or Yeah, so I, I'd love to do it in the summer because I'm actually really busy right now um, with the state science here and other things like that. But I'd love to conduct a similar experiment in the summer, even tracking the, um, the accumulation over time, which is what one of my mentors, Dr. Royer, was doing. She's um, studying the accumulation of plastics on Kahuku Beach over time so she can see the different trends. She goes there every week. So I think that's a really good way to get um, data that shows how plastics are accumulating on Oahu. Um, is this trend, uh, you think this trend is increasing or decreasing now, this accumulation of plastics? You, 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 you think it's uh, you know, getting up, going up or going down? Personally, I don't have any data to back the statement, but I think it's, it's, it's increasing because 
over time we're producing more and more plastic and even though there are efforts like beach cleanups how I did it's just not enough to combat such a big problem and especially when we have such a single use and then throw away um, consumer culture um, the problem I think is definitely increasing even with regulations being passed by some countries it's definitely a global issue that's continuing to grow um, we talked um, last week uh, with another student from Mililani High School, we, we talked about uh, uh, water purification, when it goes down into the pipes and it, it's purified. Um, I'm thinking now for plastics, I get, it's uh, how could we, uh, I guess um, recycling would be an effective solution. How could we potentially decrease uh, uh, these this trends of plastics that ends up into, uh, in, into our oceans. How could we, what are some possible, um, what are some possible things that we all could do, you know, as, as uh, people and citizens to re reduce this amount of plastics that goes into their oceans? Well, I think as consumers, we can definitely stay away from products that are single use. I know that's de definitely difficult because there are so many products that have plastic packaging that you just throw away after use, but things like straws, um, you don't need a straw to drink you know, your drink. You can just right. drink it through a cup. Um, and those are things that just go down to the ocean and then break down into smaller bits. But I think as a larger community, we definitely need to find a way to filter out these plastics and also start at the source. Even if we collect plastics through the drainage system, that still doesn't eliminate the fact that plastic is prevalent um, pretty much everywhere. We still need to clean it up. <laughs> yeah, it's it's the, 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 the culture of plastics, if mm -hmm. you want. Uh, you said 1970 it began this, this uh, trend, this use of... Yeah, so in the 1970s, it's definitely when it started to pick up um, the single-use culture, but that's not really um, when plastic was first made, but that is definitely when it started becoming more public, I think. I haven't really done too much research into the history of plastic, but it's definitely something to um, learn more about. Yeah. You mentioned that as this pl so this plastics, you know, that we throw away goes down into our pipes, it ends up in rivers or oceans, um, and then it, it stays there. It, it gathers into this massive swirls, if you want, of floating plastics in our oceans. Um, some animals get entangled into them. Some, you mentioned some of them um, even eat the plastics. Now, um, why are they so much attracted to them, to, to, to the plastics? What happens to the, to the animals that get, uh, why do... Why do they continue to eat them? Um, so most of the microplastics are actually the same size amount, or same size around as different prey of different animals like fish, and even um, they're about the same size as plankton, some of them. So I was just reading an article talking about how filter feeder, feeders, such as whales, um, are really consuming a lot of plastics. And how it affects them is when animals eat plastics, um, and plastics having the toxins that they've absorbed in the ocean water, um, they can actually get, I think an Australian study found 12.5% of the chemicals sorbed in the plastic, so that transfers over to the fish, at least that's what the study found. Um, so that can affect their reproductive systems, it can affect their neurological, um, you know, their brain and everything like that. It can impact a lot of different systems, depending on the animal, I think it differs. But they've been found in various um, different animals from zooplankton to coral polyps to whales to fish, um, pretty much everywhere, and I think I also, found that plastic, there's been a research study that says that plastic is in our bottled water and tap water. It found that 94% of tap water and bottled water in the United States has microplastics in it. And we're not talking um, the type of plastics that I sampled, more of um, less than 0.10 or 0.1 millimeter range. So it's really, really small plastic. <laughs> this is such a hot topic, an important topic for us all. And it's great to, you know, to learn from you today during this conversation. But we are about to go on to the State of Hawaii <laughs> Science Fair that's on Thursday. So, uh, you know, we're excited. Uh, what can you, can you tell us something about uh, how you're, you know, getting ready and what is going to happen there? <laughs> Um, well, I have already finished the poster that I will be displaying at the fair, but I also have to, um, I've done a lot of data analysis that I didn't really um, have in my district fair, 
or in my AP research project so far. So that's, it's a continuous work in progress. So I'm go going to be working on a binder that I can display all my data in with the different color distributions and type distributions and a lot of just things that we need to see to better understand the plastic um, pollution problem. All the best for this, all the best. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. And, and uh, um, you know, this is, um, as I said, very hot topic today, plastics in our oceans. But where do you see yourself uh, um, in, the, in the future? You know, now you are in the high school, but going on, would you be interested in uh, doing something science related or continue to try and reduce the amount of plastics in our oceans or? Definitely. So microplastic research is definitely a point of interest for me. So last year, um, I had a study on the amount of microplastics in toothpaste. And the reason I've been um, interested in microplastics is actually because of one of my extracurricular teachers in the eighth grade, um, Mrs. Kuhara. Um, she was telling us about microplastics and how they're affecting our ecosystems. And so in 10th grade, when I got the choice, I chose to find out how much microplastics are in our toothpaste, and now I'm working wow. on this study. And it's just something that's really interesting me, so I think I'd even want to become um, an environmental engineer because I'm also involved in robotics, and I, I, like, I would oh, want wow. to be an engineer, um, but I also like environmental issues, so I think it's really yeah. a great merge to, um, of what I'm interested in. Sounds like an excited, <laughs> exciting career. That's good. All yeah. the best, all the best for this. Now, um, um, it's almost time to end uh, this conversation today here on ThinkTech, but what um, would you like to tell our audience? Uh, something real easy, something uh, to wrap up and to um, let us know something that we can do every day to reduce the use of plastics. Every day. Well, I already did mention about the straws, but I'd say that um, when you're, when you're going to the store, we now have the plastic bag ban, but you can still purchase it at some stores, I believe. Try to bring reusable bags. Um, try to avoid plastic packaging. There are other um, alternatives. And also a good tip is when you go to the beach, you may not see it, and at some beaches you really do, as I figured out, but you can just look around, and even you collecting a few plastics, each of those plastics really could impact many um, animals' lives. So if you just pick up one plastic, you're making a big difference. So. That's just a tip for going to the beach. Thank you, Jasmine, thank you. We've been learning so much uh, from you today, your work at Mililani High School. We wish you all the best for the upcoming State Fair. Good luck. And uh, you've been watching uh, um, Young Talents Making Way here on ThinkTech Hawaii. We've been learning about plastics today. And uh, remember, a change begin from you for, to solve these problems for, with plastics in our oceans. We'll be back for more. Stay tuned.